coming to church will not deliver you from poverty. Coming to Egeboda, coming to church will not. So if that's why you're coming, you can as well don't come again. Wow. I feel so disturbed as I consider some of the things that are happening on the social media space concerning the landscape of the gospel. And after prayerfully considering some of this thing, I saw the need to do some apologetics concerning some of the presentations by some of our brothers in the faith. And particularly, I have paid attention to Pastor Abel Damina. Pastor Abel Damina, I believe, is a good man. But I think there were issues that he probably have not been able to resolve on a personal note with some ministers of the gospel that are called fathers of faith in the land. And it is not my business to delve so much in this discourse into what might have been their differences. But it is obvious that from the way he speaks uh, with bile and bitterness and all that, there must be some underlying issues. And what made me come to that conclusion is the fact that the principal principles upon which the Bible says we should disagree and correct ourselves um, are not in some of his presentation which is essentially love yeah and is it possible for a man of god to be in error it is very possible but the bible says those who are going to um, correct them should do it in love and say so you should take it less you also fall but my focus is on some of the subjects that Pastor Abel Damino present, and today I'll be um, focusing my attention on his discourse about. I have I saw one or two videos where he said, "God, you don't need God to be successful. You don't need God to be rich. You don't even coming to church does not deliver you from poverty." What? And I couldn't believe that I had that from. Brother Abel Damina, I, I just couldn't believe it. Why? Because the Bible is very clear, and that's what I would just want to do. To look at the scriptures, what did the Bible, what does the Bible say? I had I had him also say things like um that God is obligated to ensure that everybody has food and that that is his job, and that you don't need you don't need to pray about it. You don't need um I had him say you don't need to even pray about egg. He said, if you need egg, just come to me. I'll give it to you. You don't need to pray about it. Uh, that, that to me, contradicts what the scripture teaches us. That's why when somebody says, I am called to preach prosperity, there is no such message. If you follow the Bible to make money, you'll be poor all your life. That's why the poorest people are in church. Elon Musk is back to being the richest man on the planet. Even after spending 44 billion to buy Twitter, an app. Pray. He doesn't pay tight. He doesn't give offering. He's not born again. He doesn't believe in your Christ. One, none of your prosperity pastors can even smell it. Coming to church will never deliver you from poverty. You don't need church to be free from poverty. You only need a clean brain. If you want to make money, go to business school. They will teach you the natural laws that govern the operation of money in the system. And when you understand the laws and you apply them, you will be rich. All the treasures you need are on the earth. And God has given it freely to all men. Not to church men. Not to Christians. He has given it liberally to all men. Because he created all men. So he must make sure all men have food to eat. Because he's not a wicked God. He is perfect and good. So even the native doctor must have food to eat. The first thing is to look at what the Bible says about the subject of wealth, the subject of riches. Let's quickly make it very clear that when it comes to riches of the earth, there is a dichotomy between the one that comes from God and the one that comes from the enemy. There is riches on this earth, a lot of wealth on this earth, 
but god doesn't want us to use our human effort to get them it doesn't mean that we will not make effort he wants us to understand that he is the principal person that gives the wealth to us um the reality is that there are people who get wealth by the support of demonic spirits and no matter how little what they do the spirit supports them and they get the results and we could see example from matthew chapter 4 when the devil came to jesus and he showed him the earth and all its glory matthew chapter 4 luke chapter 4 he showed him all the glory all the beautiful things on the earth as of that time and he said to jesus i will give it to you all you need to do is to bow to me i mean jesus didn't have to go to Harvard. he just he was asking jesus to bow he said, and i'll hand it over to you the reality is that there are people who still consult some demonic spirits to actually be wealthy okay so we should take note of that um, is there anything wrong with people learning principles no principles of success and all of that they are all there but to conclude that you don't need god is my emphasis that there is something wrong with that we look at the book of proverbs chapter 10 in the book of proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 the bible says the blessing of the lord the blessing of the lord it make it rich and it added no sorrow so in other words god blesses you and the blessing of god will bring riches to you that has no sorrow in it in psalm 127 psalm chapter 1 to 7 the psalmist has this to say he said except the lord build the house they labor in vain that build it except the lord keep the city the watchmen wicked up in vain it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow for so he giveth his beloved sleep wow in other words the scripture is saying when it comes to resources it is god that bequeaths a man oh i know brother abel will come after me and say i quoted from old testament can we see what brother paul has to say in the new testament in philippians chapter 4 verse 19 philippians chapter 4 verse 19 let's hear what brother paul said brother paul said but my god but my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus who does the supply god who does the supply god not the lesson you learned from Abbott. yeah the lesson you have from Abbott has its own place but ultimately it must be god that does it paul gave us this notion to work he said paul plants apollo waters it is god who grants increase so the presentation of pastor Abel Damino is foreign to the gospel oh you may say oh that was said by paul can we look at what jesus said what jesus himself said in matthew chapter 6 jesus made a statement concerning our cares what we need he made a statement about it in matthew chapter 6 in matthew chapter 6 jesus was talking about um from verse 25 he said, therefore, I say to you, take no thought. Don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you shall drink, nor what you shall, what your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and body than raiment? Behold the fowl of the air for the soul, nor neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly father feeded them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add copy to your blah, blah, blah. It continues like that. Then he said, and why take ye thought for me, Raymond? Consider the lilies of the, of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God, take note, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Who clothes you? God. Who clothes you? god and and jesus kept making it very clear that it is god that does supply so i want to present that what the ideology that um, pastor abel is presenting most often than not they are foreign to the gospel that he also is presenting 
I, I can understand the zeal that um, Pastor Abel is talking with. But again, it is obvious that he is so much interested in attacking the personalities he has in his mind that he had forgotten the balance of the scripture. For some of us who are concerned about the fragility of the faith and the belief of people, it is important to bring the scriptures to bear. Because if Pastor Abel Damino were to be correct that God does not do, do that, knowledge from Ava do, then we need to question if Jesus really fed 5,000 people. <laughs> Did he really feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes? Did he really feed 7,000 people? If we believe he did, then we are saying God is the one who supplies. And then God can make rich. Oh, God can make rich. It's only that you have to play your part. You do what you need to do. And then God does his own. But to conclude that people coming to church does not make them rich is absolutely a fallacy. It's fallacy <laughs> error of judgment, fallacy of hasty generalization. Because you just make it look like what we are preaching is incorrect. Where do you put Obadiah? The Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Many people are under the sage of the enemy. The enemy has covered their lives, reduced their lives to nothing until they come into the atmosphere of the church because the church is not a lecture theater as it presents the church is not a lecture theater the church is a spiritual gathering and to reduce the church only to a lecture theater a place for intellectual engagement is a disservice disservice to the scriptures why the bible tells us that jesus was teaching and the power of god was present to heal and to deliver. If we believe that in the teaching service, the power of God can heal the sick, what makes us feel the power of God cannot heal poverty? Poverty, in case you don't know, is also a sickness. And the power of God that can heal sickness, physical sickness, mental sickness, will also heal a person of poverty. There are people that spells are casted upon that they are unable to make progress and as they come boom, the power of god takes those things over the scripture is full of examples of people how do we talk about jabez who went before the lord and said really with my reproach bless me and god blessed him and his story changed if we say god does not make people rich if we say that coming to church the house of god does not make people rich. I wonder what else we'll do. If we say we don't need God to be successful, I wonder what our terms of success means. Because the Bible is very clear about all the different kinds of success. There is a good success and there is a bad success. Bad success is a success that you have that has no God in it. It comes with sorrow. But when you have success that God gives you because there is a success that God gives, that's why he told Joshua that this word shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it. He didn't say Avad. He didn't say Avad. God didn't say go to Avad. He said this book shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night to observe, to do all that is written there. And he said then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Dr. Abel, with great respect for you, I believe your theology is wrong on this matter. I have great respect for you because we must respect our elders in the faith. Um, but I also want to appeal to you, Dr. Abel Damina, please, can you lace some of your presentation with genuity and sincerity in such a way that your focus is not a fight with those you are attacking in your mind, but will make the word the standard and present it in a balanced form. I'll come back with the next one where... You talk about seed. God bless you.